Dysmenorrhea is really common in young people and it can be particularly frightening, especially if the young person doesn't have the receptive language to have explained to them what's going on or the expressive language to explain what they're feeling and what they're worried about. Periods and period problems can be really difficult to manage for young people with physical disability, learning disability or complex needs. Sexuality and sexual behaviour are not the exclusive privilege of neurotypical people, but unfortunately sexual abuse, coercion, sexually transmitted infections and pregnancy are much more common in young people with physical or learning disability. In this video I'm going to take you through some tips on how to manage period problems in young people with disability and please make sure you check out Tara George's brilliant post that this is based on on the DFTB website. The link will be below. Here are eight options for how to manage periods in young people with physical or learning disability. First off, before we start implementing any treatment, it's really important to listen to the young person about what the main issue is. It may be that the young person struggles with the dexterity to open sanitary pads or to open tampons. It may be that they have to have a parent come into school to help change their, their period products and that that's just really embarrassing for them. Take the time to listen and understand what the issues are that they're facing and also whatever plan you implement, make sure the young person knows what the plan is, what they're doing and that they feel confident to be able to manage this. So how do we manage periods in these young people? Period pants are basically underwear that have an absorbent layer that soaks up all the blood so you don't need any extra products as well. You've just got one item that you can put on and you're good to go. And when you're finished with them, you just wash them and you can reuse them. Two, tranexamic acid. This can be really useful for young people who have heavy periods. It can be a particular problem in young people with sensory issues because that feeling of having very wet pads or feeling uncomfortable could be a real challenge in young people with sensory problems. Three, the progestogen only pill. This shouldn't be used as a first line treatment because it's really common to have erratic bleeding. And remember, it needs to be taken daily, so that can be a challenge. But 50% of young women will have amenorrhea after six months of taking this daily. It can also help reduce the frequency of the need to change pads, which can be a real practical problem in these young people. Four, the combined oral contraceptive pill. This is really commonly used. We need to remember about contraindications. So they'd be contraindicated in people with a previous DVT or a history of migraines. There's also some relative contraindications such as immobility or a high BMI. You can also use targeted regimes with a combined oral contraceptive pill. So you kind of run the cycles together so you can buy or try cycle them and that can induce a longer period of amenorrhea. And also in young people where swallowing is hard, lowest can actually be ground down and can be given through a gastrostomy tube. Five, transdermal contraceptives like Evra. In these, you're going to have the same absolute and relative contraindications as for the combined pill, but it's just weekly administration rather than daily, which can make a huge difference. And you can also tailor a regime to help manage the bleeding. Six, depo progestogen. This is the most commonly used method in young people with learning disability or complex needs. And 70% of these young people will have amenorrhea by 12 months. Cyanopress can be given by the carer. It's a subcut injection and it's usually a lot less painful and easier for the young person to manage. However, we need to know that this can cause side effects of weight gain and that weight gain can cause problems for the young person with mobility issues. It can also cause problems for the carer if they're need needing to help lift or move the young person and in young people with lower BMIs it can increase the risk of osteoporosis so it's something we need to be aware of. Seven, intrauterine systems. This works by slowly releasing progestogen into the uterus. It's licensed for use for five years and has no drug interactions which makes it a really good choice. Amenorrhea is really common with an IUS and dysmenorrhea tends to improve but the uterine cavity needs to be at least six centimeters and there needs to be a degree of mobility and consent to be able to fit this in a routine clinic so often in young people with disability or complex needs these IUSs will be fitted under a general anaesthetic. 
and eight, the contraceptive implant. With this, there's only a 20% rate of amenorrhea and you can get erratic bleeding, but it does tend to be lighter and less painful bleeding. There is a risk of the young person actually picking at the implant site, so it's usually better to implant it in the dominant arm and in the triceps area. They can be tricky to remove, so the current guidelines is actually to just leave the first one in and put a second one in as well. If you enjoyed this video, you'll like my video on communicating with young people with complex needs in the ED, which you can see here.